this lecture we will discuss the concepts of quadratic forms and their definiteness that is we will try to analyze whether a given expression of a homogeneous polynomial of degree 2 which we refer as a quadratic form always takes positive values or always takes negative values we possibly have gone through the expression of a quadratic form in connection with classifying a quadratic or quadratic surface while studying analytical plane geometry in high school where we were given a general equation of a second degree curve or of conic sections and then by variable transformation we have converted the given general equation of second degree to their canonical forms and then we have identified whether a given equation of second degree represents a circle, a parabola, an ellipse or a hyperbola. Here in connection with optimization theory, we will require definiteness of a quadratic form to check whether a given function of several variables represents a convex function or whether the graph of a function of several variables represents a surface which is a bowl or a vessel type. Let's start our lecture with mentioning the agenda of this lecture. This lecture is majorly on the topic of definiteness of matrices or definiteness of quadratic forms. Towards this, at first we shall define the notion of quadratic forms, then the idea of definiteness of quadratic forms, thereafter three criteria to check definiteness of quadratic forms will be talked. Those are eigenvalue criterion, then minor criterion and matrix factorization criterion. Towards the end of this lecture, we shall also discuss the notion of a quadratic function which is addition of a quadratic form with an affine function. The notions of affine functions and linear functions which are required to define quadratic functions also will be discussed in this lecture. Before starting the real agenda of this lecture, let us quickly visit what we have done in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we started our discussion with the notion of a vector, then vector space and subspace of a vector space were talked. Thereafter, the notions of linear dependence and linear independence of a set of vectors consisting finitely many or infinitely many elements were described with the help of the notion of linear independence of a set of vectors. We discussed the notions of basis and dimension of a vector space as a generalization of length of a vector. We have described the notion of norm as a generalization of dot product of two vectors. We discussed the notion of inner product of two vectors. We also got to know the concept of Euclidean projection or simply a projection of a vector over the ray of a given vector. We also got to know how to take projection of a given vector on a set of linear equalities in the n-dimensional Euclidean space Rn with the help of the projection operator. We have also characterized a convex set. Finally, we discussed the notions of eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix of order n by n with real entries. In this lecture, we will use this idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors to characterize definiteness of quadratic forms. Let us first define what do we mean by a quadratic form. In mathematics, form is a function, say f, defined over a vector space, capital V, which can be expressed as a homogeneous function of the coordinates over any basis. By coordinate of a vector x in a vector space capital V, we mean the following. Let capital B consisting of the vectors V1, V2 till Vp say is an ordered basis of the vector space capital V. That means this set capital B is not just a basis of capital V, but the elements in capital B appear in a specific order. V1 comes at the first position, 
V2 comes in the second position and Vp comes at the pth position. Given an ordered basis, capital B of the vector space capital V to each vector small x in capital V, there corresponds a unique ordered set of n scalars x1, x2 till xp such that x can be expressed by x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus till xp vp. The ordered p tuple x1 x2 till xp is said to be the coordinates of the vector x with respect to the ordered basis capital B. If we change the set capital B then evidently this p tuple to present x will get changed to some other p tuple say x1 dash x2 dash till xp dash. If f is such a function that f is a homogeneous function with respect to any coordinate system x1 x2 till xp or x1 dash x2 dash till xp dash then f is called a form. An algebraic form which we simply refer as a form is a homogeneous polynomial. A quadratic form is a homogeneous polynomial of degree 2. That means an expression of the type double summation aij into xi xj where aijs are real numbers is said to be a real quadratic form in n variables x1 x2 till xn. Note that a quadratic form that is this expression can be written in the matrix form x transpose ax where capital A is the matrix whose ijth entry is the real number aij and x is the variable vector consisting the components as x1, x2 till xn. As this expression x transpose ax is a real number, we can write x transpose ax as its transpose that is x transpose ax is equal to x transpose a transpose x and then both of these two quantities is equal to half of x transpose ax plus x transpose a transpose x which is identical to x transpose half of the matrix a plus a transpose times the vector x. We observe that this matrix is a symmetric matrix denoting this matrix as capital Q we see that x transpose ax is equal to x transpose qx where q is a symmetric matrix. Importantly, we notice that this matrix q is the unique symmetric matrix in expressing the matrix capital A in terms of a symmetric and a skew symmetric matrix. The unique matrix capital Q is given by the expression half times A plus A transpose and the unique expression of capital S is equal to half times A minus A transpose. Expressing the matrix capital A in terms of Q plus S, we observe that X transpose AX is equal to x transpose qx plus x transpose sx and due to the expression of capital S, this expression gets vanished and thereby getting x transpose ax is equal to x transpose qx where q is a unique symmetric matrix given by half times a plus a transpose. So corresponding to any given quadratic form x transpose ax, we have a unique symmetric matrix capital Q 
to express the expression identical to x transpose ax the symmetric matrix q is called the matrix of the quadratic form double summation aij times xi into xj evidently if we write the ijth element of the matrix capital q as qij then qij is given by half of aij plus aji note that a real quadratic form x transpose qx assumes the value 0 when x is the null vector however x transpose qx takes up different real values for different non null vector x if the expression x transpose qx is positive for every non null vector x then we say this quadratic form is definitely positive for every x or positive definite that is a real quadratic form x transpose qx or the corresponding symmetric matrix capital q is said to be positive definite or abbreviatedly pd if x transpose qx is greater than 0 for all non null vector in the n dimensional euclidean space rn the quadratic form x transpose qx is said to be positive semi definite or abbreviately psd if this expression x transpose qx always gives non negative value the matrix capital q is said to be negative definite if the expression x transpose qx gives negative value for every non null vector x or the expression minus x transpose qx is positive for every non null vector x that is x transpose qx is negative definite or abbreviatedly nd if minus x transpose qx is positive definite x transpose qx is called negative semi definite or abbreviatedly nsd if minus x transpose qx is positive semi definite the quadratic form x transpose qx is said to be indefinite if x transpose qx is neither positive semi definite nor negative semi definite that is there exists a non null vector x for which x transpose qx is negative and there exists some other non null vector x dash say for which x dash qx is positive these are the definitions of definiteness of a given symmetric matrix or the corresponding quadratic form here we have defined real quadratic forms that is which are of this form with the entries in capital q are all real and x is a vector of real variables however quadratic forms can also be defined for the matrices with complex or imaginary entries and with complex valued variables if you are interested in learning general abstract definition of quadratic forms you may please visit the first few pages of chapter 7 of the book entitled linear algebra by silov where you will find that a quadratic form is a special case of a bilinear form here i must also mention that in several books you will find quadratic forms are defined for real symmetric matrix capital a that means they pre assume that this matrix capital a which gives the quadratic form is symmetric in fact there is no loss of generality if you pre assume that this matrix capital a is symmetric because corresponding to every quadratic form you have a unique symmetric matrix capital q we shall therefore as and when talk about quadratic forms we will consider the corresponding matrix is 
a symmetric matrix. Since for our purpose of developing optimization theories, we will need only real quadratic forms. We have defined here the notion of quadratic forms with the corresponding symmetric matrix having all real entries and with real variable vector x. We shall now discuss a few results on characterizing definiteness of a given real quadratic form or a real symmetric matrix capital Q. The first result that we shall take up here is the definiteness characterization with the help of eigenvalues of the matrix capital Q which states that a symmetric matrix Q is positive definite if and only if all eigenvalues of the matrix capital Q are positive and a symmetric matrix Q is positive semi-definite if and only if all eigenvalues of Q are non-negative. I will provide a sketch of the proof of this result over here. However, for a detailed proof, you may please visit the proof of the theorem 3.7 on page 30 of the book by Chong and Jack related to diagonalization of a symmetric matrix. A proof of this result is done with the help of an auxiliary result related to diagonalization of a symmetric matrix which states that for any symmetric matrix capital Q there exists an orthogonal matrix capital P so that P inverse QP is the diagonal matrix consisting the diagonal entries as the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2 till lambda n of the matrix capital Q of order n by n. Here this matrix capital P is taken as the matrix whose columns are n orthonormal eigenvectors of the matrix capital Q. There is a result in matrix analysis that every symmetric matrix of order n by n has a set of n linearly independent eigenvectors which is an orthonormal set. Taking a set of n orthonormal eigenvectors of the real symmetric matrix capital Q, construct the matrix capital P, you will get an orthogonal matrix capital P that is P satisfies P P transpose is equal to the identity matrix of order n and with this P you will get P inverse QP is equal to the diagonal matrix capital D. For a proof of this auxiliary result you may please visit the proof of the theorem 4.19.1 on page 224 of this book by Professor S. K. Mapa. From this equation, we note that the symmetric matrix capital Q can be expressed as a multiplication of the matrices P, D and P inverse. Where P is an orthogonal matrix, D is a diagonal matrix. This expression of Q is called an eigen decomposition of the matrix capital Q. During the description of capital P, I was mentioning that columns of capital P are n orthonormal eigenvectors of the matrix capital Q. But what do we mean by an orthonormal set of vectors? Orthonormality is a generalization of perpendicularity of two vectors. In the previous lecture, I was mentioning that a pair of vectors u and v is said to be perpendicular if their inner product is equal to zero. In addition to this perpendicularity, if the length of the vectors u and v are one, that means they are unit vectors, then this set of vectors u and v is called an orthonormal set of vectors. 
for a finitely many set of vectors v1 v2 vp taken from an euclidean space is said to be orthogonal if any pair of two distinct vectors from this set is perpendicular to each other that means with respect to the inner product of the underlying euclidean space inner product of vi and vj is equal to 0 whenever the index i is different than j in addition to this condition of inner product equals to 0 if we have length of each vector vi is equal to 1 then we call this set of vectors an orthonormal set here note that this orthogonality is the generalization of the geometric notion of perpendicularity the word orthogonal came from the ancient greek word orthosgonia the word orthos means upright and gonia means angle in ancient ages greek people used to use the term orthogonian to mean a rectangle later this term orthogonian came to mean a right triangle in 12th century the post classical latin word orthogonalis came to mean a right angle or something related to right angle possibly from this term orthogonalis the term orthogonal came next with the help of this auxiliary result i will try to give a sketch of the proof of this result one characterizing definiteness by eigenvalues of the matrix we note that by a variable transformation x to y given by y is equal to p transpose x where p is the orthogonal matrix that we have discussed just now whose columns are a set of orthonormal eigenvectors of the matrix capital q of the quadratic form by this transformation of variables the quadratic form x transpose q x can be written as y transpose p transpose q p times y since p is an orthogonal matrix and hence p transpose is the matrix p inverse this expression further can be written as y transpose p inverse q p times y because p transpose is p inverse which is further equals to y transpose the matrix capital D a diagonal matrix consisting the diagonal entries as eigenvalues of capital Q this expression is further explicitly equal to lambda 1 y 1 square plus lambda 2 y 2 square plus so on till lambda n y n square now we see that this expression is positive only when all these eigenvalues lambda 1 lambda 2 till lambda n are positive and this expression is non-negative if and only if all lambda i's are non-negative and for a mixture of positive and negative values for lambda 1 lambda 2 till lambda n this expression gets both positive as well as negative values therefore positivity and negativity of the quadratic form can be fully determined with the help of the signs of the eigenvalues by this expression of the quadratic form x transpose qx we can extract a very nice geometrical interpretation for positive definite quadratic forms or positive definite matrices we notice that for a given positive constant alpha c the set of vectors xs that satisfy x transpose qx is equal to alpha is identical to set of all possible points in terms of y is given by lambda 1 y 1 square plus lambda 2 y 2 square plus so on till lambda n y n square 
is equal to alpha. Where this y is interrelated with x by the transformation y is equal to P inverse X, where capital P is the same matrix that we have considered in the immediately previous result. That is, capital P consists of n many orthonormal set of eigenvectors of the matrix capital Q. Now we see that geometrically this set determines an ellipsoid. If we have capital Q a matrix of order 2 by 2, then we will have just two terms over here and these two terms equals to a positive constant alpha determines an ellipse in the space of y1 and y2. Next now we consider an example of a quadratic form and try to characterize its definiteness with the help of the eigenvalues of the corresponding matrix. We consider the quadratic form say 2x1 square minus 2x1 x2 minus 2x2 x3 plus 2x2 square plus 2x3 square. The matrix corresponding to this quadratic form is given by the diagonal entries as 2 at the first place. In the place of q22, we get the coefficient of x2 square that is equals to 2. In the place of q33, we get the coefficient of x3 square that is again 2. Now this place of q12 and q21 together that is their sum will give us the coefficient of x1 and x2. As we need Q a symmetric matrix, we distribute this coefficient minus 2 equally on these two positions and accordingly we get minus 1 and minus 1 over here. Now this corner and this corner together that means their addition will give us the coefficient of x1 into x3 but the coefficient of x1 into x3 in the quadratic form is equal to 0. Therefore, at these corner places you will have values 0. This place and this place together that is their sum will give the coefficient of x2 times x3 which is equal to minus 2. We distribute this minus 2 equally on these two positions and we accordingly get minus 1 and minus 1. Now let us determine eigenvalues of this matrix capital Q. To determine the eigenvalues of this matrix capital Q, we need to find roots of the characteristic equation of the matrix capital Q, which is given by the determinant of this matrix is equal to 0. By expanding this determinant, you will find this expression which gives us roots of the characteristic equation as lambda equals to 2, 2 plus root 2 and 2 minus root 2 which are all positive and hence the given quadratic form or the corresponding matrix capital Q is positive definite. Therefore, with the help of the identification of eigenvalues, we can easily characterize definiteness of a quadratic form. But notice that Identification of eigenvalues requires solving a polynomial equation. For instance, in this example, we had to solve a cubic equation. And we know finding roots of a higher degree polynomial equation is not an easy task. And therefore, employment of eigenvalue criterion for determining definiteness of a quadratic form is a difficult task. In fact, we all know abel ruffini theorem or Abel's impossibility theorem that states that there is no closed form algebraic expression to the general equations of degree 5 or higher with arbitrary coefficients. Therefore, if we have a matrix of order 5 or more or if we have a quadratic form 
with five or more many variables then we will face terrible difficulty to find a root of the corresponding characteristic equation for a 2 by 2 matrix or for a 3 by 3 matrix or for a 4 by 4 matrix we get quadratic or cubic or a quadratic equation for which we know there are closed form algebraic expressions to solve them for instance for a quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0 we all know the sridharacharya formula that x is equal to minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a for a cubic equation an italian polymath cardano derived first formula for solving in terms of these coefficients a b c and d for a quadratic equation or a polynomial equation with degree 4 another italian mathematician ferrari who lived in this earth only 43 years derived first formula in terms of the coefficients a b c d and e however for a fifth degree polynomial or higher avel ruffini's theorem shows that all attempts to find a closed form algebraic expression will be futile here by closed form algebraic expression i mean the roots of the concerned equation in terms of the general values for the coefficients of the concerned equation for instance for a quadratic equation you put any values of a b and c in this closed form you will get the roots of this equation given by this expression such an expression is not possible to find for the general equations of degree 5 or higher and therefore polynomial equations of degree 5 or more are tricky to find their solutions you know this result of Avell and Ruffini was also later found in the notes left by a great mathematician Evariste Galva who died in a duel at the age of just 20. If polynomial equations are difficult to solve then we need to find some other way out to characterize definiteness of quadratic forms. Another characterization of definiteness is commonly done with the help of the computation of minors or minor determinants of a given square matrix. To discuss the minor criterion for determining positive definiteness of a matrix, first let us recall the concepts of minor, principal minor and leading principal minors of a given matrix by a minor or minor determinant of a matrix we all know that determinant of a square sub matrix of a matrix is a minor by a principal minor of a square matrix we mean the determinant of a square sub matrix of a square matrix say the matrix a where this square sub matrix is obtained by deleting k rows and the corresponding k columns. By corresponding k columns, we mean if we are deleting the ith row, we need to delete the ith column also. By a leading principal minor, we mean determinant of a square sub matrix of the matrix A that is obtained by deleting last k many columns and last k many rows that means leading principal minors are determinants of northwest square sub matrices of the matrix capital a for instance if we have the matrix capital a as this matrix then its leading principal minors are determinant of this matrix determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix 
and finally determinant of the entire matrix as in a classroom problem we commonly deal with 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 matrices let me consider to write principal minors and leading principal minors of a 3 by 3 matrix let us consider the matrix this matrix its principal minors are given by determinant of deleting few many rows and the corresponding column numbers from this matrix capital a by deleting first column and first row we get a principal minor as fq minus pg if we delete the second column and second row then we get aq minus hc as another principal minor if we delete third row and third column we get af minus eb if we now delete two rows and two columns first row second row and first column and second column we get q deleting second row third row and second column third column we will get a deleting first row third row first column and third column we will get f by not deleting any of the rows and columns we get the determinant a as one of the principal minors so these are all principal minors of the matrix capital a leading principal minors of capital a are given by determinant of this top left one by one matrix determinant of top left this two by two matrix and determinant of this top left three by three matrix that is the leading principal minors of capital a are given by a a f minus b e and determinant of the matrix capital a the sylvester criterion for checking positive definiteness states that a symmetric matrix is positive definite if and only if all the leading principal minors of the matrix are positive we shall not prove this result the proof is bit constructive and lengthy you may please visit the proof of theorem 3.6 on page 27 in the chong and jacks book which i have mentioned earlier in this lecture here i must mention a caution point that sylvester's criterion is applicable only for symmetric matrices if we try to apply sylvester criterion on non symmetric matrices we may lead to a wrong result for example consider this matrix say this 2 by 2 matrix then notice that it has leading principal minors all positive but the quadratic form x transpose ax that is this expression is not positive definite for instance with this non null vector x as 1 1 we get x transpose ax is equal to minus 2 which is negative now let me ask you a question that if the leading principal minors of a symmetric matrix are all non negative can we assure that the matrix is positive semi definite the answer to this question is negative for example take the matrix say this matrix all entries 1 only this entry is equal to half its all leading principal minors are non negative but observe that with this vector x 1 1 minus 2 we have x transpose qx is equal to minus 2 and also with x is equal to say 1 1 0 we have x transpose qx is equal to 4 which is greater than 0 and therefore the matrix q is neither positive semi definite nor negative semi definite so non negativity of leading principal minors may not ensure 
पॉजिटिव सेमीडेफिनाइटनेस ऑफ ए गिवन सिमेट्रिक मैट्रिक्स हाउएवर नॉन नेगेटिविटी ऑफ द लीडिंग प्रिंसिपल माइनोर्स इज ए नेसेसरी कंडीशन फॉर ए सिमेट्रिक मैट्रिक्स टू बी पॉजिटिव सेमीडेफिनाइट इन फैक्ट वी हैव द फॉलोइंग नेसेसरी एंड सफिशिएंट कंडीशन टू कैरेक्टराइज पॉजिटिव सेमीडेफिनाइट मैट्रिक्सेस थ्रू प्रिंसिपल माइनोर्स which states that a symmetric matrix q is positive semi definite if and only if all principal minors of q are non negative we shall not prove this result if you are interested you may please visit the proof of theorem 4 on page 307 of the book entitled the theory of matrices by gant matcher since in classroom problems mostly we will appear with 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 matrices to check their definiteness let me neatly write the principal minor criterion to check positive definiteness or positive semi definiteness of 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 matrices a 2 by 2 symmetric matrix ab bc is positive definite if and only if its leading principal minors are positive this 2 by 2 matrix is positive semi definite if its all principal minors are non negative that is a greater than equals to 0 C greater than equals to zero and A C minus B square is also greater than equals to zero. For a three by three symmetric matrix, say A B C B D E and C E F, it is positive definite if and only if all these three conditions hold, and it is positive semi definite. if and only if all these seven conditions hold where this capital a is this matrix you know this sylvester's criterion to check positive definiteness is also applicable for a hermitian matrix that is a complex matrix capital q with its conjugate transpose is equal to the matrix q this sylvester's criterion is named after an english mathematician james joseph or james joseph sylvester sylvester was james joseph's adopted surname when his older brother did so upon immigration to united states a country which at that time required all immigrants to have a given name a middle name and a surname so it would be more appropriate to call this condition as james joseph's condition not the sylvester's condition anyway this sylvester's criterion and the eigen value criterion are commonly used techniques for checking definiteness of matrices in order to know several other criteria you may please visit this interesting article by one of the famous convex analysts hiriat urute and jerome malik from which and its references you will find several other criteria to check definiteness of symmetric matrices i will quickly mention one more criterion to check definiteness that is through matrix decomposition it states that every symmetric positive definite matrix has a unique factorization of the form l l transpose where l is a lower triangular matrix with all its diagonal entries positive this factorization l l transpose is called lower cholesky decomposition and its proof can be found from the book entitled matrix analysis by horn and junction in the corollary 7.2.9 on page 441 of this book you will find a proof of 
this result. Here I must tell you that in general this triangular factorization may not exist for any symmetric matrix. It has to be a positive definite symmetric matrix. For example, consider the matrix 0, 1 and 1, 0 which gives an indefinite quadratic form and this matrix cannot be written as a product of two triangular matrices. If however the matrix is symmetric and positive semi-definite instead of positive definite then it still has a decomposition of this form LL transpose where the diagonal entries of capital L are allowed to be zeros. Needly this result for symmetric positive semi-definite matrices is the following that if a symmetric matrix is positive semi-definite then it can be decomposed as A is equal to L L transpose where L is a lower triangular matrix whose diagonal entries are allowed to be zeros. However, unlike to the result for positive definite matrix that there exists a unique factorization, a unique capital L for which the matrix can be written as LL transpose. This uniqueness may not be followed for a positive semi-definite matrix. For example, consider the matrix, this 2 by 2 matrix and note that we have infinitely many decompositions with this matrix as the lower triangular matrix. For any value of theta, we notice that we have this equation valid and hence this matrix has infinitely many lower triangular decomposition. For a proof of this result for positive semi-definite symmetric matrix, you please visit the same corollary 7.2.9 on page 441 of this book by Horn and Johnson. Now notice that if a matrix A can be expressed as LL transpose, then the corresponding quadratic form X transpose AX gives us the expression X transpose L L transpose into X which is equal to dot product of these two vectors L transpose X and the same vector L transpose X which is then length of the vector L transpose X square of it its non-negativity simply shows that the matrix capital A is positive semi-definite. If the matrix L has positive diagonal entries, then this expression is positive for any non-null vector X which proves positive definiteness of the matrix capital A. Therefore, if we can somehow find a matrix capital L for which A equals to L L transpose, then we can quickly ensure the definiteness of the matrix capital A. In fact, regarding decomposition of positive semi-definite matrices, there is a result which states that a matrix capital A is positive semi-definite if and only if the matrix A can be written as some matrix transpose the matrix capital B. Here there can be many capital B's for which capital A is equal to B transpose B. Possibly the matrix capital B can also be rectangular. However, there is a unique positive semi-definite matrix capital S for which these PSD matrix capital A can be expressed as S transpose S. This positive semi-definite matrix capital S is called square root of the matrix capital A.
because being positive semi definite is is a symmetric matrix and therefore a can be written as s times s or s square for a proof of this result you may please visit the proof of the theorem 7.2.6 on page 439 with the value of k is equal to 2 of the book by horn and johnson that i have mentioned earlier over here this book we will wrap up this portion of matrix decomposition criterion of definiteness by mentioning a result similar to this result to characterize positive definite matrices this result is applicable for positive semi definite matrices and for a positive definite matrix the result is as follows a matrix is positive definite if and only if the matrix A can be written as B transpose B for some non singular capital B. Proof of the reverse part of this result is trivial because X transpose AX is equal to norm of BX square which gives positive value for non null vector X. To prove the forward part, we move as follows. Notice that the matrix capital A is a symmetric matrix. Therefore, we can have an eigen decomposition of this matrix capital A. Let's suppose an eigen decomposition is given by P transpose DP for some orthogonal matrix capital P. We have seen this equation earlier in proving eigenvalue criterion to check definiteness of a matrix. Here the matrix capital D is the diagonal matrix consisting diagonal entries as eigenvalues of the matrix capital A. Now as in the forward part we assume the matrix capital A is positive definite. Therefore all the entries in the diagonal of the matrix capital D are positive by defining a matrix say D dash the diagonal matrix with the diagonal entries positive square roots of lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda n. We see that the matrix capital A can be written as P transpose D dash into D dash multiplied with P this is further equals to P transpose D dash is a symmetric matrix and therefore D dash transpose is equal to D dash. So we have capital A is equal to this expression which further gives D dash P transpose into D dash P. Now by taking B as this matrix D dash P we see that capital A is equal to B transpose B. This proves this result. With this result, I now stop here the results on characterizing definiteness of matrices. Next, we will derive an inequality for quadratic forms that will be useful quite often later. In the inequality, we will try to identify a lower bound alpha 1 and an upper bound alpha 2 of the quantity x transpose ax divided by x transpose x or norm x square for non-null vectors xs. This quantity for a symmetric matrix capital A is called a Rayleigh quotient which we denote by Rax that is equal to x transpose ax divided by x transpose x. Now varying the value of x, we will get different values of this Rayleigh coefficient. Let us try to find a lower bound alpha 1 and an upper bound alpha 2 of the Rayleigh quotient so that we can get an inequality of the form alpha 1 norm x square 
is less than equal to x transpose a x less than equal to alpha 2 times norm x square. To find a lower bound and upper bound of this Rayleigh quotient for varied values of x, we first note that this function fx is equal to x transpose ax divided by x transpose x for non-null x can be expressed as x by norm x transpose times a multiplied with the vector x divided by norm x. As x by norm x is a unit vector, the range of the function f for non-null x in Rn is identical to the range of the function u transpose a u with u being x by x norm that is norm u is equal to 1. Therefore, to find a lower bound alpha 1 of this function fx, we need to find a lower bound of this function u transpose a u on this unit sphere. Similarly, to find an upper bound alpha 2, we need to find an upper bound of this function u transpose a u on the unit sphere. To find this lower bound alpha 1 and upper bound alpha 2, we aim to find maximum most value of this function and minimum most value of this function over the set norm u is equal to 1. So we need to solve two constrained optimization problems that maximize u transpose a u subject to norm u is equal to 1 and find the minimum most value of u transpose a u subject to norm u is equal to 1. These two problems are constrained optimization problems and so far we do not know how to solve constrained optimization problems. So we will solve them by some kind of matrix analysis. Note that the matrix capital A is a symmetric matrix. So there exists an orthogonal matrix capital P such that the matrix capital A can be written as P inverse some diagonal matrix into P or P transpose DP where D is the diagonal matrix consisting the diagonal entries as eigenvalues of the matrix capital A. Now noting that this P inverse DP eigen decomposition as P transpose DP we have u transpose a u is equal to u transpose p transpose d p times u which is equal to p u transpose d times p u. Now by considering a variable transformation u to y given by y is equal to p u we get this expression as y transpose dy. This expression y transpose dy is equal to in the explicit form lambda 1 y1 1 square plus lambda 2 y2 2 square plus till lambda n y n square. Now without loss of generality we assume that in this diagonal matrix the eigenvalues are in such an order that lambda 1 is less than equal to lambda 2 and less than equal to lambda n. In order to have these lambdas being in this order, we may have to reorder the column vectors of the matrix capital P. So by a possible reordering of the appearance of the column vectors in capital P, without loss of generality, we can assume that the diagonal entries of this matrix are appearing in these orders. Then we notice that this expression is greater than or equals to lambda 1 times summation of all y i squares and this expression is further less than equals to lambda n times i is equal to 
1 to n summation y i square. Now notice that the length of this vector y is equal to p u is given by y transpose y which is equal to u transpose p transpose p times u. As p is an orthogonal matrix, we have this matrix is equal to the identity matrix of order n and hence this entire expression is equal to u transpose u but u transpose u is equal to 1 because we are trying to maximize or minimize this expression subject to the condition that norm u is equal to 1. So for norm u is equal to 1, we have norm y is equal to 1 and hence this expression is having value 1 and therefore finally we get that lambda 1 is less than equal to u transpose a u which is further less than equals to lambda n where lambda 1 is the minimum most eigenvalue of the matrix capital A and lambda n is maximum most eigenvalue of the matrix capital A and ultimately in terms of x we get the following inequality that lambda 1 less than or equals to x transpose ax divided by norm x square less than equal to lambda n or lambda 1 times norm x square less than equals to x transpose ax which is less than equals to lambda n times norm x square and this is true for every x in the n dimensional euclidean space r n for any given symmetric matrix capital a now here you might ask me a question that i was trying to find a maximum value and minimum value of u transpose a x subject to norm u is equal to 1 did I really find maximum and minimum most value of this function over the unit sphere norm u is equal to 1? Yes, indeed I did. You please try to figure out that this lambda 1 is not just a lower bound of u transpose a u. It is essentially the minimum most value of this expression u transpose a u over norm u is equal to 1. Similarly, please try to find out that this lambda n is the maximum most value of this expression u transpose a u over the unit sphere norm u is equal to 1. That means you try to find out some particular value of u with norm u is equal to 1 for which you will get equalities on this left and on the right. I am keeping this as a home task. Next, we shall now define the notion of a quadratic function. By a quadratic function, we mean a real valued function of several variables that is sum of a quadratic form and an affine function. By an affine function, we mean an expression of the type a transpose x plus some constant b where a is a given vector in Rn and b is a real number. Thus, a quadratic form has an expression of the type fx is equal to x transpose qx plus a transpose x plus b, where q is a symmetric matrix of order n by n, a is a given vector in Rn and B is a real number. When n is equal to 1, that means if this function is dependent on one variable, then in that case we notice that a quadratic function fx gives an expression of the type fx is equal to some real number q into x square plus some real number a into x plus some constant b which represents a parabola may not be passing through origin. 
However, a quadratic form of one variable is always a parabola passing through origin. Here I have said that a quadratic function is the sum of a quadratic form and an affine function. There is a general definition of an affine function. Here we have encountered affine functions, those are of real valued. In general, by an affine function, we mean the sum of a linear mapping and a constant vector. By a linear mapping, we mean the following. A linear map or a linear transformation is a function from a vector space, say Rn, to some other vector space, say Rm, that preserves the operation of vector addition and scalar multiplication. That means given two vectors x and y in Rn, action of t on their addition is identical to addition of the vectors tx and ty and for scalar multiplication you consider any scalar say alpha the action of t on the vector alpha multiplication of x is identical to alpha multiplication of the vector given by the action of t on x there is a result which states that any linear map from Rn to Rm is given by a matrix of order m by n with real entries. That means corresponding to any given t which is a linear map from Rn to Rm, there exists a matrix of order m by n such that the action of t on any vector x in Rn is given by the matrix multiplication a with x so corresponding to every linear map there exists a matrix and corresponding to any given matrix of order m by n there is a linear map given by this equation you can quickly verify this that if a is a matrix of order m by n then this expression ax satisfies both of these two conditions to become a linear map. As a proof of this result, you may please follow the section of matrix representation of linear mapping from the book by Professor S.K. Mapa entitled Higher Algebra. By an affine map, we mean a linear map plus a constant vector. That is, a function say capital F from Rn to Rm is called an affine map if there exists a matrix of order m by n and a constant vector say b in Rm such that the expression of the function f is given by ax plus b. When this m is equal to 1, that is when the function f is real valued, then we see that this matrix capital A is a row vector consisting n many elements and B is a real number. Writing the row vector as A transpose, then we see that for m is equal to 1, an affine map fx can be presented by fx is equal to a transpose x plus some real number b. Exactly the same expression we have added with a quadratic form to define a quadratic function. Notice that the graph of a real valued affine map gives us a plane given by z is equal to a transpose x plus b. For a real valued affine map of one variable, the graph of z equals to ax plus b in the xz plane is a line passing through the point 0b. This line can be thought of a parallel translation of the line ax passing through origin. Similarly, for real valued affine map of two variables is a plane 
passing through the point 0, 0, B. You know this word affine came from the Latin word affinis, whose English equivalence is affinity or connected with. Possibly as affine maps can be obtained by translating linear maps by the translation that y to y plus b or ax to ax plus b mathematicians commonly feel affine maps are connected with linear map and possibly from there the terminology affine came however the exact mathematical reason behind the terminology affine is a bit of abstruse now i stop the lecture here and before closing the lecture let me ask you a few questions for your self analysis the first question is the following that do all diagonal entries of a positive definite matrix must be positive second question is that we know a matrix is negative definite if negative of the matrix is positive definite that is how we defined negative definiteness now can we say a matrix is negative definite if and only if all leading principal minors of the matrix are negative think over it here i must mention that checking of negative definiteness of a matrix is commonly done by checking positive definiteness of negative of the matrix and thus i have not discussed the conditions for 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 matrices to check their negative definiteness or negative semi definiteness you please try to figure out some necessary and sufficient conditions in terms of principal minors or leading principal minors to check negative definiteness of a given matrix of order say 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 i end up this lecture by asking one more question that if we are given two positive definite matrices can we say that their product is positive definite with these three questions let me stop the lecture here in the next lecture we shall start our discussion on a new topic which is calculus for functions of several variables to start with calculus for functions of several variables we shall require a few notions like balls neighborhoods limit point interior point compact set etc in the next lecture we shall define and discuss all these necessary concepts to start with calculus for functions of several variables thank you thank you all for all of your kind attention